we are jumping straight into a video and you see me right here um, in practice the track is wet for the first session that we go out it had been raining um, all day and uh, finally some clear skies the first session nobody went out second session we were all out on track uh, they threw all the four cycle guys out there at the same time senior junior uh, heavy Tilliston it was a blast um, if you're from following right here junior if you ever need a suit they're the ones that do podium products just check the description down below uh, they do a great job they're usually on uh, some otks but this weekend they're on some cart republics uh under a cdr tent uh trying them out um they were you know just trying to get a hand on the cart so it took them a minute to figure it out but as you can see here it looks like a big old traffic jam and a mess but it was fun racing. It was good because the uh, the rain is the equalizer. Uh, slick track, wet track, it all comes down to the equalizer. I love practicing in these conditions. It, in my opinion, makes you a better driver. Um, right here, I'm following Phil and Bryce. And Phil was the quickest one in the practice sessions all day. Um, I threw down some flyer laps were close, but I was just not consistently as fast as him. So... Uh, he just pulls off here to the side, raises his hand up, lets everybody buy. Um, I follow Bryce, and then I decide to dip it up on the inside, and I uh, get on my merry way. Um, in these conditions, I'm really quick. Um, it's just something, I think, because of my weight and because of how big I am, I can throw my weight around and make the cart do what I want to do. Um, it has nothing to do with driver skill or anything. It's just I can manipulate my weight and get that side by if I need or get that extra little bit of grip just because I know how to use my body uh, to, uh, <laughs> to, do, to do what I want the cart to do. But good times out there. It was really fun. Um, really didn't mess with cart setup at the moment. Uh, next section, I decided to throw in some caster, and that's where I think the whole weekend uh, started to fall apart for me. Uh, really when it came down to it. I'll explain more in the later videos, but just pay attention uh, To how the weekend goes. All right guys. Welcome back to the channel. We're here for practice day of SSKC Look who's back back for good We'll see how long that lasts. <laughs> All right um, We were running behind a little bit uh, We've been working on the carts uh, it rained, but then we have beautiful weather and it's supposed to rain later on. So we're playing this South Florida weather thing about rain, no rain, you know, you know how it is. So it's about 11. It's supposed to be raining right now. Yeah, exactly. So we don't know what the heck's happening. We're just trying to get some practice sessions in. So we got our first practice session in, uh, which we second time on track. First time on track, second, you guys know what I mean. Nobody went out in the first just because it was soaking wet. So we went out there, felt really good. Both carts felt great. Uh, motors are running strong. I was kind of worried since I put that thing back together. Um, like now. Yeah, <laughs> just finished up. So uh, on to the next practice, see if it uh, stays dry. Uh, we'd love to get three dry sessions in for today. Uh, I am going to do a little, couple changes. Uh, I set up my rear end setup for um, Jacksonville. And I just ran the cart with the whole bunch of cast to see how it felt. So it felt pretty good, rotated really quick. Um, I, I'm just not a big fan of the caster, but for some reason the cart goes quicker, but then tightens up towards the end of the run. So just go wide in the rear and see how it goes. Let's, go. Let's get after it. Next practice session out, you can see the sun's out, track is drying off. The only area where there's water is those rumble strips. There was some water in that area. Now, turn one for me was just, I didn't know how to take it all weekend. I didn't know if I should go all the way out to rumble strips or should keep it tight. I just didn't know what the heck to do. I do know that the motor was cutting off every time I was nailing those rumble strips. So what I did is I unplugged the kill switch. Um, Mornay told me about unplugging this kill switch it could happen it could short out inside which that was the main issue here i go on the inside of the 28 i don't think he sees me out on his outside uh, that's my mistake never ever hang around the outside of the corner especially if he's if the cart side by side that is his position so no harm no foul just got the cart a little dirty 
Uh, after that, you know, started going on my going my merry way again. Uh, caught up to Gabe. Gabe's first weekend back, he was uh, not happy with his driving. But you got to understand, uh, being out of the cart for almost a year is really hard to get back into the cart and just be fast. The only person I know that could do that is the Perkins or like a guy named Eric Fagan. Just he doesn't have to drive every week, and the guy's just fast off the bat. Same thing with the Perkins, man. They don't have to drive; they're just quick. Um, get right behind Jesus, get a good run off uh, the last corner. He weighs me by through, and then here I'm following uh, the seven to forty-seven, which I know they're both junior cards, so I want to try to get by them as quickly as possible. Uh, they're really fast on the straightaways, um, so I let the seven. Uh, Cut back inside, kill the momentum for him on the exit of this corner. And then you're going to see me doing some slight protecting of the line down the straightaway. All you see is me move down because he was much quicker than me down the straights and did not want to get past again. So I was just protecting that line. Next session out, I decided to go out behind Matt. Matt has thousands and thousands of laps here, and he's been practicing more and more. So I want to go behind him. He is running the medium class. So my whole goal for this session was just stay close enough to learn as much as I could. Um, I come down here a lot as well, but I just don't come down here consistently a lot. So I just wanted to try to pick up any new nuances I could have gotten um, just falling behind Matt, his different lines. And we both have different driving styles as well. Um, I learned a lot uh, just knowing where to place the cart better, especially on turn one. He was able to make it work. He was able to go all the way out to the rumble strips. And really, if you wanted to go quicker, Using the rumble strips on turn one was worth three tenths. Um, if you nailed it right and your cart would just do what you needed to do in that fast section, it would just go. So that was really the big key. Um, if you could make it work and make it happen. Go outside, you have just a better run. Like right there, you don't have to pinch off two, pinch off three. You can just flow to two or three and get a bigger gap. So, um, I was just able to stay close just due to, to traffic uh, the uh, situation. Other than that, they would just walk back on that, uh, that, that one, two, and three, the way they took it, the way Bryce and Matt took it, way better. So again, I got stuck behind the seven. I wanted to get by him as quickly as possible. Um, and then just stay on the mics. Matt's back on the It's really hard just to follow someone around at times. Um, you know, you don't want to get too close. Like right here, the 291 steps out. Um, I locked up the brakes. Matt locked up the brakes. I almost collected three cards in one turn. So in practice, I just tried not to get too close. Uh, but it also kind of messes up, you know, your breaking points, your turning points. So at this time, I'm trying to just focus on what he's doing and then apply it to myself later on. And what works for you works for you. Not everything works for you for the same person so say uh you want to turn in early and you just can't get the cart to turn in early or turn in late you just can't get the cart to do that you have to do what works for you and what works for your car at that point in time um i think people get over and i do this too uh overthink you know it's all about cart setup all about cart this sometimes it's just the line that you're taking and my biggest problem is turning in early I have the biggest issue I want to turn in early and then following some of these really really good drivers out there uh, they turn in late I'll try to stay behind Phil but I got Tilston in the way and then right here out of nowhere it becomes four wide in the turn one I decided to back out of it I'm glad I did I backed out really early if not I would have stuffed that bad boy into the wall and been really pissed off of myself so the quick guys get away. So I'm just trying to, you know, just work on my line, uh, trying to run down the group in front of me, see if I can catch them. And then, um, as you can see, it gets hairy there. Uh, so I'm just trying to, you know, keep up with the senior guys, see if I can see what they're doing, maybe what they're running is a little different than mine. But like I said earlier, work, do what works for you. It, it doesn't work for everybody, and that's the hardest part. Um, Learning the lines is big. Using the rubber, driving in the rubber is big as well. Uh, it was good to see Ruben Cheris back on track. He had not been in the cart for like eight months himself. So he was all over the place and doing it, dealing with some handling issues as well. But it was good to see him on track. 
uh, really happy to race uh, race against him and uh, see him back out there. He was doing double duty, heavy and medium, which I think was crazy to do both. Now uh, I'm right here behind uh, Jesus again, um, you know, just trying to beat down his back door um, and just, uh, you know, try to get back by around him. You can see here, I'm trying to use that line, which it works right there. I'm able to get a better run and set up uh, the exit of three better, which gives me a better run down to four. So if you can make it work, it works. It's just making it work every time. It was really difficult for me. Sometimes I can just, I can make it happen. And other times I couldn't. Uh, I really didn't know why. And getting on those rumble strips, it would pull the cart to the, to the wall. Uh, so you had to keep that wheel crank left uh, to get the cart to turn at the last second. It was, it was one of the weirder things to to try out. But, um. They have tried different things. I think it's better than the grass that they had out there. That would just make the track super freaking dirty and nasty. And I think it's better than those speed bumps they tried doing because people would just hop the speed bumps. So. so we've been practicing all day. Gabe's actually been working on his own cart. He's doing his first gear change. I didn't like the gear change. We'll, we'll see. I didn't like that last change I did, I know that much. I dropped the second. <clears throat> I usually run the cart without caster, and this is the first time I take all the caster back out of it, like I like running it. But man, it fell flat on his face. Yeah, so this track's very, like, you can be super aggressive, like, in the first section of the track, but then if on the back end somebody's just geared right, they'll just blow right past you. I know, it's just so, it's so, so you can be perfect. Like, I, you can nail the turn, you can hit your apex, everything, but if the guy's or girl behind you is geared like just with the right gear they'll just get you on the straight no matter what you do so um that's kind of what i'm going for um drop the tooth just to see if it works if not i already know what the gear that we're on works and i can always go back to it so that's the point of practice i guess right yeah yeah that's why we're here so, so. so now now what i did is i put the caster back how it was and added more caster send it yep like the old school guys say more caster more faster but i don't know if it's that or the 300 lap tires i have on I'm, These are the same tires from so the look, endurance race. Yeah, I was just gonna say that. So. <laughs> it could just be Jorge. Find out. Jorge. Yeah, Jorge, just put some tires on it. Stop being cheap. It, you know, it's funny because I came out on new tires because I haven't been out. So I said, you know what? I want to practice. And he gave me shit. And now, if he had the new tires, you wouldn't have to know. You wouldn't have to worry. If I had the new tires during practice, I would know what I had. Exactly, but you don't. Because you chose not to have new tires during practice. I always do this. Exactly. I don't know why. This, this is why I don't practice. Exactly. I usually just show up and it's good because I have to put new tires on for the event. Now I'm chasing something that's probably just caused because of super old tires. We'll see if I know. I know Phil, you know what? Phil has me worried, right? I've been running 56 nines, 57 flat, fast. This last session I slowed down and 58, 58 flat. And Phil ran 56.6. Shit. Oh, final practice. Let's see what happens. All right. This is where I made the mistake. I added a lot of caster and the cart really, really got fast. But the whole problem with this is there's not much rubber on the ground. Okay. Because of all the rain, there wasn't much rubber on the ground. Um, this really bites me in the butt comes Sunday. Uh, Saturday, the cart just stayed fast and everything was good to go. Um, right here, I can't get really by the junior. So what I'm going to do is just going to back out of it. Uh, I'm going to let everybody go in front of me because I was getting frustrated. Um, I just could not get by him. So this is where I pull off some really, really good lap times. Uh, I let these guys get out in front of me, and I just want to see uh, what I had. And I was able to pull off some crazy fast laps, but the mistake was, and I always do it, is practicing on really old tires. And due to the amount of grip that was laid out on the track, um, that's why the cart was quick. Um, the caster worked, the cart didn't get tight, it got quicker, and it's just because I there was no grip on the track, and the cart would just fly. So what I did is just since it was quick with the caster out, I mean in, I added more caster to a cart. 
actually all the damn caster I could put into it. Uh, right here is my flyer lap. The cart, my flyer laps. The cart was just hooked up, going. Um, I had, I had, I was trying to get a tow from it. Um, if I would have gotten a really good tow from these guys, it probably would have been a really low 56, maybe a one or a two, but it was uh, three 56 fives in a row, which made me feel really good because that just meant I would, could keep up with Phil. That's all I wanted to know. The problem was I never took the caster out of the damn cart. But the next day coming up, next video, you'll see uh, there's rain on the track. Um, it goes from rain to dry, stuff like that. So really the track never rubs in, rubbers in. This was a really good learning experience weekend for me, though. A good humbling experience for me, though, on Sunday as well. But thanks for watching this practice video, guys. Stay tuned for the next videos coming up. I'll explain a little bit more of what went down and how it went down. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. I'll catch you guys on track. Thanks for watching. When you're packed up and ready to go, but you forget something inside the tent. Yep, that's what happened. I just went and got my phone out of the tent anyway. So, final practice in the books. Ran really, really well after the tires got some grip. Uh, I had a whole bunch of caster, which helped, but I think with the new tires, it won't help. So, we'll see after first practice. Um, Gabe did really well as well. He got quicker and quicker. He felt better with the 55 gear. That's him climbing out. Woo. We'll see what okay. happens tomorrow, guys. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, like, share. Catch All you guys on track. Yeah. <laughs> We're tired.